All right, hello. Uh, so for the next example, we are going to work out a differential for u with independent variables of uh, t and v or v and t. Okay, so uh, we'd like to get an expression for u with independent variables t and v. Um, and so t and v would be, say, the two uh, independent intensive variables I would use to pin down uh, the state of my initial and final state when calculating the change in u uh, for a given process. Okay. So, uh, just as for our other examples, okay, we start by first writing down our mathematical expression for the differential of u with independent variables v and t. Okay, so I'm going to use t as my first variable and v for my second, um, just to try and keep them straight and consistent with our other expressions. Okay, so I'm going to write this as du is partial u partial t at constant v dt plus partial u partial v a constant t dv. Okay, so that's step one. So then step two is I go to my equation sheet and I look to see if I have a heat capacity relationship or a Maxwell relationship that I can plug in. Okay, and so I know this first term is going to be our definition of CV, but let's just go over to our equation sheet for completeness. Okay, so scrolling down, I see that I have my definition of CV, right? du dt a constant v. Um, and I have no Maxwell relationships that involve uh, the differential of u. Okay, so if I go back, then I can, you know, plug in our definition of CV. Okay, so two. Okay, so du then is equal to CV, our constant volume heat capacity, dt plus partial u, partial v, a constant t, dv. Okay, and then from our equation sheet, we already saw that we didn't have a heat capacity relationship or Maxwell relationship we could plug in for the second term. Okay. Remember, I want this final expression to only contain the variables p, v, t, uh, c, p, and c, v. All right? And so this doesn't conform to that um, you know, desired requirement. Um, and so I don't have a Maxwell relationship or heat capacity relationship, so I'm stuck. So when I'm stuck, what I'll do is I'll go back to our fundamental equation for u um, and work out an alternative, alternative expression for uh, du, dv, a constant t, and then see if, you know, with that alternative expression, um, I have a Maxwell relationship or heat well or heat capacity relationship that I can plug in uh, and simplify the equation. Okay, so my fundamental equation for you, okay, it's on your equation sheet if you forget, okay, but it's TDS minus PDV. Okay, I'm interested in partial U partial V at constant T. So I'm going to start by dividing through my differentials by DV. I can only differentiate with respect to one variable at a time, so I'll need to hold the other constant. And then in theory, all right, I should make these all, you know, curves since now they're partial derivatives. Um, although that's not, for the purpose of this class, it's not, you know, incredibly essential. Okay, so cool. So now if I go through here, okay, here's a partial u, partial v, a constant t what we're trying to work out in our alternative expression for. Okay. And the first term is t ds dv at constant t. So I'm going to go over to my equation sheet, and I see that I have a maximum relationship for ds dv at constant t. So that's equal to partial p, partial t at constant v. right? So I can get rid of entropy in favor of p, v, and t. So then this would be t, I've already forgotten, uh, partial p, partial partial p, partial t, a constant v, okay, uh, minus um, p, and then, well, dv, dv, a constant t um, would just be 1, right, so minus p. So plugging that in now, I have that du is equal to cv dt uh, plus, in brackets, t, partial p, partial t, a constant v minus p dv. Okay, so now I see that I have my desired final expression, right? An expression for the differential of u using independent variables t and v, and my final expression only contains uh, heat capacities um, and p, v, and t. Okay, cool, great. So there is my final expression. So if I wanted to calculate the change in internal energy from going from uh, some initial state to some final state for, uh, for a given process, 
um, I could characterize those states using temperature and pressure um, and calculate said desired property change. Okay, um, you know, differential like dp dt at constant v, right, and you know how p changes with v, right? Those are things I could get from uh, an equation of state. Okay, great. So um, we'll look at the very simple case of an ideal gas, right? And mainly because back in Thermo 1, um, you probably, you know, exploited the relationship that internal energy, just like enthalpy of an ideal gas, is only a function of temperature. Okay, and so now we can, we can actually prove that. Okay, and so how we would uh, simplify this or evaluate this for the case of an ideal gas is, well, an ideal gas is described by the equation of state PV equals RT. So looking here, the first term I need to evaluate is partial P, partial T at constant V. Okay. So for my ideal gas equation of state, P is equal to RT over V. Therefore, partial P, partial T at constant V is equal to partial RT over V, partial T at constant V. Okay, I want to substitute in for P, RT over V, because my differential is with respect to T, right? So now I actually have temperature there, and I'm holding V constant, right? So there's my other variable. Um, R is just gas constant, so um, it can hang out there, right? So in order to evaluate how, um, you know, in order to evaluate partial P, partial T at constant V, I need to know how pressure changes with respect to temperature at constant volume, right? That's what uh, the ideal gas equation of state gives us. Right? And the same would be true in general if you were to use, say, cubic, uh, any of your cubic equations of state, uh, they would tell you how pressure changes with respect to temperature at constant volume. Right? And you could work that out. Single component, single phase system, I have two um, independent uh, intensive variables that need to be specified to fix the state of my system. Right? So here I'm fixing V, V is constant, and so then I'm just looking at how P changes with respect to my other variable. Cool. <laughs> All right. So. R is just my molar uh, gas constant. If V is being held constant, so I can pull out R over V, and I'm left with just then partial T, partial T at constant V, where partial T, partial T at constant V would just be one, okay? So that's just one, and then we're just left with R over V. So now plugging that in, okay, or let's just evaluate this bracket term. So then if I have part or T, partial P, partial T at constant V minus P, that is equal to, okay, so T times R over V, so I'm going to write as RT over V minus, well, P is just equal to RT over V, okay, and so RT over V minus RT over V, zero, okay, so you just showed for an ideal gas that this term in brackets is zero, okay, so zero times dV is just, just zero. Right? And so what we're left with for the case of an ideal gas is that du, right? and let me put, say, ideal gas up there, is equal to CV ideal gas dt. Right? And so you were just able to show that for an ideal gas, internal energy is independent of volume. It's only a function of t. Right? And if you were to, say, go up to you know, this expression, okay, you would get that du dv a constant t. Okay? And you know one way to get it is even just you know, to think of it as matching, right? So if I wanted uh, du dv at constant t, it's just this, oh, it's just that term in brackets, okay? Or I could actually pull it out from here, right? I would divide through by dv, and then since I can only differentiate with respect to one variable at a time, I'd have to hold the other constant, um, and you'd get, you know, the same result, okay? So, cool. So you just show that for an ideal gas, u is independent of 